In the European Parliament in Strasbourg, is Irene Tolere. Thank you so much for your presence. Thank you for inviting me. We are discussing about the breakfast directive and I think it's very important for our health and for our future to understand what have you put in it. Uh, in the breakfast directive you have a lot of things that we eat during breakfast and one of them is honey. And honey is uh, one of the most adulterated products inside the European Union. But honey is also the economic models for bees. Mm -hmm. Because if you have natural bees, then the uh, people who win money on it are the people who make honey. So if you have adulterated honey, then you uh, risk having no more bees, which is what happened in the US or in, uh, in China. So it was very important that with that directive, we kill fraud on honey and that consumers they know that they can buy a good honey, good for the flowers, good for the, the bees and good for our health and the environment. And how do you do it in each member state? What are the new rules? Let's explain. The, the, the new rule is that on all the honey pot, you will have to put the origin of the honey with the percentages of the blend. Mm -hmm. So that way, uh, if uh, you buy a honey that is uh, cheap, you see that it's uh, made from 80% of uh, Chinese uh, uh, honey. And at the same time, we have put uh, a, a focus to have a laboratory uh, of uh, um, uh, reference for analysis so that we can uh, uh, check real honey against uh, a false honey. And so that in total, we protect our honey producers. What are the honey producers saying? Because we've, we've seen how things evolved in, in uh, the last year. Due to climate change, due to use of, uh, improper use of pesticides and uh, some, some other things, uh, the bees are in danger and yes. the production of honey in general is in, in, is in danger. What should we do more? Of course, uh, uh, in, inside the European uh, Parliament, we have voted the Green Deal and the Farm to Fork strategy. So we have banned already uh, the uh, pesticides that are not good for the pollinizators, so mm -hmm. for the bees. So that's one of the first mirror clause that we have managed to, uh, to deal for the European Union, which means to protect uh, the inside and the outside of the European Union market against use of pesticides that kill bees. But once again, I think that the best protection for the honest is that we have a, a European ecosystem of honey uh, that works. It is important to see what are the differences between the member states, uh, what is happening here in France or in, in my country, in Romania. I think that uh, globally uh, the, the climate change is the first threat for all the European countries and then one of the variants we can have is that there is uh, some specific new illnesses of predators or bees that are not present in all the countries with the same uh, uh, threat, level of threat. But um, honey, uh, what is nice is that all the European countries have their own uh, honey. Mm -hmm. I come from the south of France, we do uh, uh, honey with uh, lavenders mm -hmm. and uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, in uh, the eastern countries or in Romania, uh, honey is done with other flowers and it's very... That's that, that are specific for, for, uh, for that country, so exactly. it is normal. Yeah. Exactly, and that's uh, united in our diversity is the motto of the European Union, so let's do it united in our honey. Mm -hmm. uh, and also in our comfiture, in our jam, because yes. you, you are modifying uh, some, some uh, rules over there. Yeah, because there was the, the subject of the level of sugar or level of fruit. It was a very uh, big uh, discussion because with the level of uh, climate change, the fruits have naturally more sugar and uh, we want to decrease the level of sugar for health. So uh, it was a very uh, difficult issue, but we managed to have a balanced compromise that was also built up with all the uh, uh, jam producers so that uh, we keep on having uh, jam as a, an economic débouché for all the fruit producers in the European Union. Will it be different in taste? The jam made uh, healthier, will it be different in price? 
because we know in terms of health, yes. sure it is. Uh, in terms of price, no. In, term, in terms of taste, there is a, a, a possibility, but maybe not taste, maybe color. Mm -hmm. uh, all the people who watch us who have tried to make uh, jams, they know how precise the level of fruit compared to the level of sugar is and the result that uh, we can have. So I'm sure that all the jam producers will adapt uh, because the, 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 the global goal to have a better human health and have a better uh, environmental health is a goal that we all share. What is actually the perfect breakfast? <laughs> uh, I, I am a total European, even though I do miss the fact that uh, uh, the UK uh, left uh, the, mm -hmm. the, the European Union. I must admit that if I am uh, with my husband or a lover, I'm French, huh? so, but, uh, <laughs> so it will be a café crème with a croissant on a little café uh, on the board of the Seine. But then when I'm traveling, I do love my eggs and bacon and mm -hmm. with uh, uh, baked beans and, and I do of the English uh, uh, breakfast. And uh, if I go to the northern of uh, Europe, I'm uh, sure that I will like to have uh, some pieces of uh, uh, smoked fish. So... Um it depends on, on the region, actually. Yes. And in, and order to, in order to, I think, in order to be healthier, yes. you have to, to, to adapt to, to yes. the region. and uh, Exactly. But when you go to Italy, a nice espresso coffee. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you, I, the, the, that's the, the best of the European Union, is to take the best of each country. The European Union project has never been to globalize culture, but to make the most of existing culture. And with this uh, breakfast directive, that's... Uh, all we do and maybe we can make a championship of uh, uh, Europe, uh, European breakfast to uh, check which one is uh, the best but I think that we have one European breakfast for each occasion. For 2024 what's um, your goal as, as a member of uh, the European Parliament in, in, in these areas of agriculture, of staying healthier, what are your goals? Me, I'm a f uh, really a, 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 a very a strong advocate for uh, European agriculture for two reasons. I come from the farming community, so I'm talking about my friends, families, I understand them, and uh, I feel for them because uh, they feed us, but sometimes we just uh, 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 ask them to change their way of uh, working without giving them the revenue that goes mm -hmm. with it. So it can be a bit difficult for an aging uh, farming community. And also because I really believe that it's one of the strong geopolitical points of the European Union to be a strong uh, farming uh, power. Uh, because uh, we see that we have uh, migra migra migration issues. So why do people uh, move? because they need to move. And, of course, hunger is one of them. So I think that uh, uh, the European Union should not uh, shy away from uh, putting very uh, bluntly on the table that we are uh, 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 an agricultural power and we, uh, count, we should count on the geopolitical world as such. Um, those who are watching you right now are trying to understand how their future will look like in the European um, the Union in terms of uh, being uh, um, of having a protection uh, in terms of uh, staying healthier in terms of not starving yes. in terms of uh, of uh, also um, uh, having uh, let's say uh, that national component yes, yes. Um, I, 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 I it's true that uh, since uh, 2019, the world has changed in a, a way uh, <laughs> that uh, was not to be expected. So Brexit was a first uh, a big uh, inconnu uh, in the European Union uh, story. And then we had uh, uh, acceleration with uh, uh, COVID-19, Ukraine war. Energy crisis. Energy crisis. Uh, the new war that the, the, is the happening new, now. The, the new war plus all the impact on, on the, of the climate change that mm -hmm. is here and that uh, we can see. I really, the message is that uh, Europe is protecting us. Uh, in Romania, in France, uh, the stakes we have to solve, no country alone can, be, uh, can deliver on it. So 
at 27, we suddenly become the biggest uh, uh, consuming market of the world. And so there are lots of things that we can do uh, united. But also, the, the people need to vote to tell us what sort of uh, Europe uh, that they want. Because at the moment, we have the rise of populists. What the populists say is they want less Europe. Me, Renew, we want more Europe, not more Europe to take decisions in the state of uh, nations, but more Europe to protect all the Europeans that are uh, living here. So we saw, uh, for instance, uh, on the COVID-19, I'm French, we are a rich country, but we couldn't have gotten vaccinated alone because the French research didn't find the vaccine. So at 27, we managed to produce a vaccine all uh, the, the, the European citizens. So for the small or the big countries, the rich or the, uh, the, the less rich countries, uh, the young or the old, the north or the south, I really believe that the European project is protecting us and it can protect us also against inflation, the cost of living. Exactly. Uh, uh, we have uh, worked in the past on uh, uh, food checks. I think that's something we should put back on the table because at the moment uh, with the energy crisis, all through Europe, we have a uh, double income, one or two kids, young families that have difficulties uh, at the end of the month. It's not normal. So we need to help these guys because it's good that Europeans make uh, 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 children. So I think that we, have a, we need to uh, vote for a Europe that's more social, more protective, more just, but also more powerful. Thank you so much for this discussion. Thank you very much. Vocelor de acasă vă spun să rămâneți pe antena 3 CNN. Nu uitați că ne revedem și sâmbătă viitoare la 9 și 30 de minute. Cu bine și sănătoși să fim!